Now next topic is functional neurosurgery by Dr. K. Viswanathan. Dr. K. Viswanathan recently came out from after committing and serving in uh, UK. Uh, first year, now joined as a consultant uh, neurosurgeon in the SRM, whatever. It's also useful in intractable pain 
where the various other areas like the peri aqueductal, gray matter, thalamus can all be stimulated. It's currently being introduced for epilepsy, where I was fortunate when working in the UK to be involved in a few cases where even uh, intractable idiopathic generalized epilepsies have uh, benefited. So, in epilepsy, the target is thalamus, a uh, few subnuclei in the thalamus. Psychosurgery has also slowly come back in this world. Uh, treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder, depression and things are uh, coming. But the jury is still out whether these are ideal cases to start off with for uh, deep brain stimulation. Because whereas in a tremor you can put the DBS and then make the patient steady, in OCD and depression there is no uh, objective method where we can immediately say whether we are going to benefit what current to use, what stimulations. So as such, psychosurgery, at least uh, apart from China, has not taken off in a big way in many of the major centers. Next slide, please. So as I said, in Parkinson's disease, the case selection is idiopathic PD, which is dopa responsive in patients with dyskinesias. Essential tremor is another uh, typical indication where DBS can cure essential trauma, especially in the patients with non-axial peripheral trauma, where uh, either propranolol or rexaphenidyl, none of these medicines work, or even if they work, they may not work uh, to the patient's satisfaction. Next slide, please. So these are the targets. Thalamus is uh, stimulated in uh, trauma. Globus pallidus or the subthalamic nucleus can be used in Parkinson's disease, but uh, the con uh, current consensus is subthalamic nucleus because the additional advantage of using subthalamic nucleus is that the dopa medication dosing can be brought down in uh, the successful cases. <coughs> Pedunculopontine nucleus has been tried by uh, Professor Tipo Aziz in Oxford, but uh, consensus is that it may or may not be an ideal target. So does DBS work? Is it worth spending 9, 10 lakhs of rupees for an operation, putting uh, such expensive equipment, uh, doing an operation for one full day? Does it really work? Now here you can see that um, this is the meta-analysis which has uh, come recently. And uh, the UPDRS, that is the Unified Parkinson's Disease Radial Scale, the motor component of which uh, when analyzed for patients in various different series has consistently shown that it's falling to the left of uh, the median, which means that it favors surgery. So the consensus is, as far as Parkinson's disease is concerned, that it really helps. Next please. What other things can be done? If patient cannot afford the cost, we could consider lesional surgeries, which have been done for decades, which is stereotactic thalamotomies or pallidotomies. Can we do it here in, uh, in Chennai, especially in my center? Yes, we can because we've got the Lexel frame, brain lab, neuro navigation, uh, and good quality CG and MR. As uh, I said uh, before, uh, the cost is the main consideration. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the companies which have developed and patented this uh, are uh, holding the monopoly as far as this is concerned. It's like the next uh, uh, the subset which I am going to talk about is epilepsy. As everybody knows, epilepsy affects a significant proportion of our uh, population, especially uh, children. What it is, I need not tell all of you the definition of epilepsy, but uh, the important line is the last one. 10% of patients who are epileptics are intractable epilepsy. Where one, two, three medicines cannot work. So it is in those patients that we can consider surgical options. Next slide, please. So the pre-surgical workup of epilepsy includes the simple things, a good quality history and examination, which will tell us the clinical semiology of the seizures, a scan EEG, with, which can be supplemented by a video EEG by admitting the patient in hospital. If other investigations are available like magnetic encephalography that can provide complementary information. And in the cases where it is doubtful whether it's coming from left or right, whether uh, uh, 
where an intracranial monitoring can be done, that is the electrocardiography. Imaging modalities and MRI is considered the gold standard. Functional imaging like fMRI is helpful in lateralizing which side the speech is coming for, uh, for example, how close the lesion is to the motor cortex and things like that. A PET scan, which is an interictal PET scan or an ictal PET scan wherever available will be also helpful in deciding. So what does surgery involve? Surgery does not only involve resecting that epileptic focus. Surgery comes even in confirming the diagnosis, lateralizing and saying whether it's coming to the left or the right, and then localizing and saying where exactly the surgical uh, target is. So when do we do invasive monitoring? It is when the information is discordant. The clinical history says maybe it's left. The EEG says maybe it's left, maybe it's right. The MRI says it's left. We are not very sure. We want to be exactly sure before we take out that part of the patient's brain. When there are multiple lesions, we don't know which one is the main culprit, or when the lesions are close to important areas like the motor cortex, for example. So one invasive monitoring is by putting in subdural strips. Here you can see two burr holes and the uh, electrodes on either uh, side. So you put it in, <coughs> monitor the patient for about a week, and then you remove it, and uh, then you discuss with your uh, neurology colleagues, the uh, uh, neurophysiologist, and then you come to a conclusion as to whether you can offer surgery or not to this patient. Next slide. Intracranial uh, electrocorticography is another uh, thing where you place a large grid over that uh, area which you think is uh, harboring the pathology. So one week down the line, we remove the grid and the section issue. Next slide, please. Depth electrodes, here you can see that uh, uh, slender electrodes, much like the DBS electrodes, are placed into both sides to see in whether the uh, Epileptic focus is deep down. This is very useful in uh, mesial temporal sclerosis, where the mesial temporal lobe is very uh, deep, very close to the brain. Next slide. So that is uh, the uh, depth electrodes which are coming out from the uh, close to the ear. You can see on the last uh, photograph on the right, and it is placed using a stereotactic uh, technique. Next slide. So this is mesial temporal sclerosis. Can I have a pointer? This side, nice fleshy mesial temporal lobe. This side, it's not that much, much better seen on the T2 image. That is sclerosis, uh, scarred out mesial temporal lobe. This is the index uh, pathology which does very well with surgery. Uh, about 80 to 90 percent uh, seizure uh, uh, freedom rates are reported worldwide. Next slide. So there is a high flare uh, signal which you can see compared to either side and uh, this is the uh, index operation for anaplasty surgery. <laughs> this is uh, an operation where you find that half the brain has been removed out uh, from this patient. So this is called hemispherectomy which can be uh, useful in patients who have had strokes which have left them with an useless extremity but disabling epilepsy that makes them fall very often which can make them uh, uh, completely dependent patients and in such patients doing the hemisprotomy can be useful. As you can see the complication of that because one side the dura has gone so down they can, they can get uh, uh, filled up with blood in that uh, hemisphere. Next slide please. And other alternative is to remove only a small hole in the brain and then disconnect the entire pathological hemisphere from the rest of the body so that you are achieving what the previous operation achieved but with much less morbidity. Next slide please. If the lesion is very close to the speech area for example as in this condition called landau Kleffner syndrome you can get you can uh, do an operation called multiple subpyral transactions, which basically mean that you are not able to resect the tumor, uh, resect the pathological area. So what you do is you uh, separate 
the uh, fibers so that lateral spread of the epileptic uh, uh, activity does not happen. So you minimize the incidence of seizures. Finally, we've talked about all the resective options. If we, can, if we cannot find a resective option, if the patient does not want, we can consider what is called vagus nerve stimulator insertion. As you probably have learned in the medical school, uh, vagus nerve is a pure motor nerve, but putting a stimulator on the vagus nerve and sending impulses above somehow helps in patients with epilepsy because 80% of the fibre, vagus nerve fibers are actually afferent fibers which project to various areas deep inside the brain. But this is not a cure for epilepsy, it is a palliation. Supposing the typical incidence is patients with say idiopathic epilepsy who have been on 3, 4, 5 anticonvulsants but still get 5-6 uh, seizures a day and um, when you compare the addition of the fifth or the sixth anticonvulsant on a graph with the vagus nerve stimulation, the vagus nerve stimulation uh, scores over the sixth or the seventh anticonvulsant. Next slide, please. With the, the research options now available are including, uh, you know, uh, directly going in and stimulating the lesion. Next slide, please. Or uh, putting in grids. What you have uh, seen. Next slide, please. Uh, grids on the brain and uh, stimulating. So what it can do is these, these uh, are under uh, development and which may come into uh, use quite soon. So just like the electrocorticograph uh, graphic uh, lead, you place, place it there, it detects when a seizure comes and then it uh, sends an uh, electrical stimulus to abort the seizure. So that is all in the pipeline but of course again when it comes and what uh, uh, cost it will be and how efficacious it is going to be is still uh, open for discussion. Next slide, please. Again, uh, can we do uh, most of the box standard uh, epilepsy surgeries at uh, my center? Yes, we can because we've got a, a good quality epilepsy uh, uh, MRI uh, uh, protocol, uh, neural navigation, operating uh, uh, microsurgery and the instruments. Uh, at the moment, this is lacking, which is uh, a video telemetry and a video image. Next slide, please. The third uh, topic which uh, interests me is plasticity, which all of you know uh, is uh, increase in the uh, velocity dependent increase in the tonic stretch reflexes, which have positive and negative signs, which are weakness and loss of dexterity, increased deep tendon reflexes, resistance to passive stretch. Next slide, please. So, which patients have spasticity, cerebral palsy, with spastic diplegia, patients with spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis, hereditary spastic paraplegia. So, what patients benefit from surgery? Those who have failed conservative treatment or who cannot tolerate or have side effects with oral backup and medicines. Next slide. So, this is how you assess spasticity using an Ashworth grading, which is basically normal to very rigid and surgery is useful in these groups. Next slide. So what can we do? We can either selectively open up this file here, identify which are the sensory rootlets and uh, cut them off up to, 20, uh, up to about 50 to 60 percent of the sensory rootlets, dorsal rootlets. Or we can insert a backlap and pump which gives the same medicine backlap and that is helpful through the mouth but with reduced side effects uh, and uh, where the dose can be increased or decreased based on the system, uh, so, uh, based on the response. Next slide, please. Again, this is a very simple uh, uh, operation, the back of pump insertion and even selective dorsal rhizotomy with uh, monitoring can be done. Next slide, please. Th this is the last, I won't bore you for more than five uh, minutes now. The final thing is pain. All of us have experienced pain. There are medical definitions of what pain is, but all of us know what it is. Next slide. But here I am, a surgeon, coming and telling you that normally we cause pain, we cut open, but we can also help in relieving pain. This is what we cause during our surgeries, so this is what we can treat with modern neurosurgical treatments. Chronic pain can be either nociceptive, like the acute pain, or neuropathic, where the patients have paresthesias, dysesthesias, 
or there is a central component to the pain. What is important is when pain becomes chronic, there is an element of psychogenic uh, uh, element to it as well. So where, when can we consider pain? Patients who had failed back surgery syndrome or failed neck surgery syndrome have uh, had multiple spinal operations. The doctor says there is nothing wrong in my back or my neck, but still I have pain. What can I do? Spinal cord injury patients. I have lost my uh, leg, but still I have lost my uh, function of my leg, but still I am uh, having so much of pain. Patients who have had road traffic accidents, brachial plexus injury with phantom limb, <coughs> cancer pain. All resective surgery has happened for the cancer, colon cancer, pancreatic cancer, whatever cancer you name it. But right now, I am in so much pain that I will do anything if a little bit of improvement happens to that pain. Cluster headaches, migraines, and um, these are the kinds of indications where you can consider surgery. What can be done? Supposing there is a young patient with a completely flail arm from a brachial plexus injury, but with severe pain, we can do what's called a dorsal root entry zone lesioning. So these are the uh, cervical spinal cord, the dorsal roots, the ventral roots. So lesioning here where the dorsal root enters with radio frequency lesioning kit can dramatically improve his pain. Next slide please. Chordotomy. In a patient with say a dysfunctional lower limb, already lost bladder and bowel sensation by uh, involvement of the pelvic nerves and things like that, but suffering from severe pain, we can lesion the uh, cord and uh, lesion the spinal thalamic tract in the spinal cord. Next slide please. Singulotomy has been described uh, here, bilateral singulotomy has been done. Next slide please. These are all destructive things which you have heard. Now these are augmentative surgical procedures where we can put in spinal cord stimulators either in the spinal cord or peripheral nerve, deep brain stimulation, motor cortex stimulation. These are all things which can be stimulated. These are not useful in the patients with cancer but in uh, patients with chronic pain like the pain back surgery syndrome, chronic regional pain syndrome, what was called reflex sympathetic dystrophy where uh, the arm swells up red shiny arm, painful, no medicine works, those are the uh, conditions where spinal cord stimulation can help. You can give drugs through the same pump which I talked about, the uh, baclofen uh, pump. We can give morphine, long-acting local anesthetics, fluidity, uh, which can also uh, uh, help. Now, does all these uh, completely cure the pain? No. What it does and what we aim to do is at least 50 to 60 percent reduction in the intensity of the pain and you would be surprised to know that most patients would give anything for a 10 or 20 percent reduction. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Any questions? Yes, you can consider things like uh, deep brain stimulation of the thalamus or such. You can uh, say, for example, in patients with uh, facial pain, chronic facial pain, you have uh, the trigeminal, percutaneous uh, 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 trigeminal procedures where uh, you can directly stimulate the nickel scale, you can uh, put in a balloon or you can give glycerol and things like that can be done. Ganglion blocks have been done for various other procedures, like sympathetic blocks and things like that using, uh, you know, VATS. Uh, video assisted thoracoscopic uh, procedures or uh, laparoscopic. Uh, but I do not have experience in the ganglion box. Yes, yes. Thank you.